Okay, so we're on level 14 outside um, DFAT, Bob's office. We've got some facts for Bob to deliver. We're going to deliver a, a request for action from the government from Christine Assange because they need to understand that we're not going to be uh, going away so easily and we will defend Julian. So this is the Department of Foreign Affairs. There's no human beings. How bizarre is this? Like the reception can only be reached by phone. Like, are they scared of the public? Yes. Oh, Hi. Yeah. How are you going? So what is the Department of Foreign Affairs doing for Julian Assange? Well, I understand that uh, contra assistance is, is available for him. Okay, what does that mean? Because that's a really obscure statement. Kind of broad. No, no, well, that's, that's, that's available to all citizens overseas. Yeah, what does that mean, though? Well, what that means, you know, assisting him, but it in, doesn't in extend way? to... Well, I mean, that's, that's really... That's a... Uh, we know that varies really, yeah. sort of okay, case so to case, you know, depending on what people want. Um, but you know, there obviously are limits to what uh, we can do. Okay, is that because the US has already set those boundaries for you? No, 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 certainly those, there's, you know, basically there's our own consular okay. uh, charter, which I can get you a copy of if you'd like, if you'd like to have a look at the actual. I'm document. sure we can look at that. You know, online. we've got a copy here, yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious when you say consular assistance because um, so far, an innocent Australian who's not been charged with any crime in any country has been held under house arrest for 540 days in the United Kingdom. How do we make an appointment to actually speak to one of Bob Carr's representatives? The Department of Foreign Affairs is ultimately uh, accountable for what is happening to Julian Assange, not just Bob Carr and the entire Australian government. And you know, you, you guys are being, you know, we're giving fair warning. It's it's going to get messy if he's not protected because. I don't know what your personal opinions are, um, but as a government, we're extremely disappointed in what's going on. If this was happening in Iraq or Iran, would the Department of Foreign Affairs treat that as hostile, political imprisonment, kidnapping? I mean, I, I don't understand. What, what is going on? So where is the transparency of the Foreign Affairs Department in protecting an award-winning journalist who has done nothing more than the Murdochs of the world in publishing information that is in the public interest. Like, what, what do you mean? What have you done that is consular assistance for him? There are a lot of broad statements coming from the government around consular assistance. What consular assistance has been given to him? No, I mean, this, I mean that's, that's not something that necessarily our office would be, would be involved in, you know? What is that? Christine Assange we'll, we'll has been very, that. very clear that she wants the Australian government to act to get written humanitarian guarantees that the UK and Sweden will not extradite for political purposes to the US. Mm. Have you guys seen that letter? I mean, I, ju I just, I'm so, I mean, he's from Melbourne. I mean, are you guys interested in what's going on here? You talk about you being a Victorian estate office. Well, mm. you know, hello. Look, we do have an interest in all issues. This is one issue. Um, we obviously have a keen interest and the department is here to do whatever they can to assist. But you don't know but what the, they've the, done. Our, our, consular function, our, our consular function is actually based in Canberra and also mm. within all the embassies around the world. Mm. So you have access. Obviously we're mm. in Melbourne mm. and the reason that you have an office here is so that we can access you because we're not in Canberra and, and mm. it's here therefore to serve the public. Um, so we are we're here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, and we are here to take any documents. Yeah. And I think that would be a very good first step if you could actually, I don't know if you've got a letter that you've already written, if you'd like to give it to us, we'd be very, very happy to pass it on. Mm. Any documents now, I'd be happy to take them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll give you these ones and we'll be back up in a minute with some more. Is that all right? Sure, if you yep. yep. So if they like stop us downstairs trying to come back into the building, yeah. um, we can quote yeah. that we're you delivering can, information you back can to ask you. They could, they could give it us a call, sure. Yep, sure. okay. Well, right. So hopefully we will meet with the director of DFAT here in Victoria yeah. um, prior to this afternoon's rally and we will very clearly present the case that we feel very strongly about uh, around Julian Assange, you know. And I've got to say, those two boys, you know, they looked fairly humbled by that encounter. Level. They said to ring them and, and if there was a problem. Well, there was a problem to ring them. The director was going to take a petition from you yes. today, but she yeah. was now not in. Oh, well, we'll yeah. give it to Stuart. No, no, you can leave it with me or you can leave it with the police, but you can't take it up there. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. Because they've just told me that nobody is allowed up there. Why?